video I'm going to show you how to pair up Docker and SQL Server so that you can actually create your own instance of SQL Server local to your machine without the faffing around of messing around with your operating system. Um, this is ideally for my students but if you have stumbled across this video feel free to uh, follow me on this um, and if you've got any questions please pop them in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to help you. Once again, welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to run SQL Server inside of Docker. Um, there are some things that we will need to go through first. So we'll go through the prerequisites, if I can say it. Um, then we're going to pull a Docker SQL image, or I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll connect to the SQL Server, create and query data, and then finally we'll connect outside of the container. So the requisites or prerequisites are Docker Engine 1.8, so you've got to make sure you've got the latest version. I run the latest version anyway, so I've got no issue with that. Uh, you will need at least six gigabytes of disk space. Um, this is dependent on the size of your database. So if you're going to add quite a large database, you might need more space than that. At least four gigabytes of RAM on top of your current operating system needs. Okay, so you would normally use this command to pull the image, but you can activate a container without pulling the image. What will happen is, if you intend to use an image, it will go to Docker Hub and download that image if you don't have it locally installed. I'll show you how that works in a moment. So the best thing to do will be to fire up your uh, Docker desktop. I've already got mine running, so here it is. And as you can see at the moment, I've got no images and I've got no containers running. So what we need to do is we need to install and run our SQL Server image. We need to get Docker to run this command here. So it's Docker run minus E. This sets up the license agreement. Then we're setting up the password. Minus P is setting up the ports. So in this case, it's 1433. The name of the container is going to be SQL1. The host name is going to be SQL1. We're going to detach the Docker instance from PowerShell. And also, this is the image that I'm going to be using mcr.microsoft.com forward slash mssql forward slash server colon 2022 hyphen latest. So I've got the latest version running. So I've copied and pasted it, but I do need to change the password. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep to the password that it's got. There you go. So the mssql underscore sa underscore password equals password. And that's what I shall use to access my server. I shall run this now. So it's unable to find the image. So what it does is it pulls it from the hub. Okay, so it actually grabs it and brings it down. Once it's completed, it will then spin up the container from the image. Right, so we've got it spun up now and we've also got this serial number. Let's go and have a quick look at Docker Desktop a moment just to see it's running. So we've got the container named SQL1. We've got this image that it's currently using. It is running at the moment. We're using ports 1433. It started up about a minute ago and it's using this amount of CPU. If I go over to my images, you'll now see that I've got a new image set up for um, MS SQL Server. And that is currently telling me that it's in use. It was created a month ago. That was the, the date that the image was created, not the date when I downloaded it. All right. So I can see that it's all running fine from there. But what about from here? So we can use Docker PS to see any containers that we're running. And as you can see, it's running perfectly fine. And I can also use Docker images to see all the images that I've currently got. So, uh, and you can see it's also been created uh, five weeks ago. All right, I'm going to clear screen this. So I'm just going to use CLS. So now we have our Docker container spun up. We need to be able to get inside of it. Now, the command to get inside of any Docker container is Docker exec. So let's just type that in Docker exec. Now, I need to get into this specific container. So I just use minus it. 
SQL1 and Bash. Bash is the uh, born again shell used within Linux. And as we are using Docker, all Docker uh, containers contain a functioning version of Linux. So let's just hit return and what we'll see is a different prompt there. So that's MS SQL at uh, SQL1. So we're running MS SQL using the container SQL1. Right, so now I am running Windows with a Docker container inside of my PowerShell inside of the container running Bash. Not confusing at all. Now what I need to do is I need to access the SQL itself. And to do that, I need to use a query software. I need to use query software rather, not a query software, query software. So the command to run query software is SQLCMD is located at opt forward slash MSSQL hyphen tools forward slash bin forward slash SQLCMD. The minus S tells me which server I'm using. So I'm using the local host server. It's local to my system. Minus U is the user and the user is SA and minus P is the password. So if I press return now, that will get me into running SQL command. All right, so I'm now inside of SQL command, and that is the prompt that I'd be using for SQL. But let's uh, make this full size now. So the next thing we need to do is we need to prove that we're actually using SQL command. But let's create a very simple query. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do create database that allows me to create a database in SQL. And then I'm going to do test DB colon. When I press return, it will then give me line two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to select name from sys.databases. Okay. What that will do is that will give me a list of all the databases that are currently running on my SQL server. There are some resident ones, some, some that come with the system. And then I'm gonna hit go. The moment I press return now, it will run that query. Boom, there you go. And you can see that I've got master, tempdb, model, msdb, and also tempdb. Tempdb is the one that I just created. So I've now got a database set up. So the next thing I need to do is let's, let's put a table and some data inside of this database. So again, continuing to use um, SQL CMD, I'm still in there because I'm back to line one now. You can see the uh, line one just over here. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to set up a table. So first and foremost, what I need to do is make sure that I'm using the right database. So we'll go to use test DB, oops, test DB, like so. Okay, and we're gonna create a table. Uh, we're gonna use inventory, open bracket, ID, INT. Um, for those of you that aren't sure about SQL, don't worry, I'm gonna go through this in another video. Name, envar, char open bracket 50 so these um this is a text field name and it's going to be 50 characters long or no more than 50 characters long and i'm going to have a quantity and make that an integer also okay integers are whole numbers now i need to add some records to this table so i'm going to use insert into and it's going to be going into inventory all right, and the values that I'm going to use is one comma banana comma, and we'll make it 150. And then insert, insert into inventory values, open bracket two, oops, two comma, and we will have uh, orange. There is a, another way of doing this, I know, but for the benefit of students who haven't done SQL, I'm just keeping it simple for the moment. Okay, so we're gonna have 154 oranges. Okay, and like before, if I want to run this, I just simply type in go and press return. And then what will happen is it will create the table 
and then it will insert the banana and the orange into the table with those values. So let's see what happens. Go. There you go. So I've got one row affected, one row affected. That's because I created the insert into on separate lines. Now what I can do is I can actually have a look inside my table to see if the data is actually in there. So let's have a look. So I'm going to, again, use SDB. So it knows which database I'm using. And then I'm going to do a select. Um, and I'm going to do asterisk. That basically selects yeah, all the fields listed for each record. Um, and we'll do from and the name of the table, which is inventory. And just hit go. And what I'll get is a little table showing me that I've got ID 1, ID 2, and each one of those banana orange 150 and 154. So the data has ported across just fine. Okay. So that is working with the data inside of a PowerShell. Now, in an ideal world, that might be fine. But you'll probably want to use something slightly different. So let's have a look at that. OK, so what we have at the moment is we have a SQL Server running inside a Docker that we've accessed through the CLI. What we now need to do is we now need to connect to the SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. To use SQL Server Management Studio, you need to download it, search for it, SQL Server Management Studio. Here we go. I can go to the SSMS download page. There you go. Don't download this because that downloads SQL Server. All right, that'll take you to a page that will install SQL Server on Windows. We've already got it running in Docker, so we don't need to download it into Windows. Go to the download SSMS option here and just click on this button here and you will download it. Once you've downloaded it, just fire it up, follow the instructions to install it. It's as simple as just pressing next all the way through. So once you've got it installed, you should be able to just run it. So let's just do that a moment and the login details. Let me just uh, bring up my slide with that so it's a little bit clearer for you so you can see it a little bit better. There you go. So database engine, it's I'm running at 127.0.0.1, which happens to be localhost or home on my system. And then comma, this is a comma here, 1433, the port ID for the server. Um, we're going to use the SQL Server authentication, not the Microsoft authentication. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, SA is the username, and then the password goes in here. I would recommend if you uh, don't want to have to keep typing in the password, just to hit the Remember Password button and then hit Connect. But let's go back to SSMS a moment. Here we go. SQL Server Management Studio. And I've got 127.0.0.1, 1433. We're using SQL Server authentication. As you can see, you've got Windows authentication. It might default to that. Just don't use that. Use uh, SQL Server authentication. SA for the login. Now, that doesn't look right with the password, so I'm going to manually type in the password. So it's P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D. Can't see it, but I've just typed it in and then hit connect. Once you hit connect, as long as you've got your container running, but let me just check that just to make sure it's running in the background. So still got the container running. Yeah, been running for 16 minutes. Let's hit connect. And there you go. I'm now inside of SQL Server Management Studio looking into my container. And if I go to databases and test DB, I should be able to go to tables. There should be a table in there called inventory. There it is. All right, if I right click on it and go to select top 1000 rows, I should see down here, and I do, my banana and my orange, which I added just a few minutes ago. All right, so that is using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio within Windows. If you are using Mac or Linux, I believe you can use Azure Data Studio. So here are the here's the connection details for Azure Data Studio. And what I'll do is I'll spin up Azure Data Studio on my computer as well. So if I want to connect to my server, I just click on this option here, 
that gives me my connection information. So I've got MS SQL Server. That's the uh, type that I'm using. Um, I used 127.0.0.1 before, Oops, like so. I'm actually going to use a different term. I'm just going to use localhost, 1433. Okay. And again, I don't want to be using Windows authentication. I'm going to use SQL login. It's SA and the password I need to type in here. So let's just uh, don't forget to hit the remember password option. Now, if I want to check to see if this is all correct, what I can do is I can go down to database down here and click this downward arrow. Now it's going to ask if um, we're okay using this connection. That's because I'm using Docker. I'm not using a server or anything like that. So I'm going to say, yep, trust it. Go and click on it again. And what it will do is it will show me all the databases that I have available. Once I've got that, I know that this information up here is correct. It's a really handy way to check to see if everything's okay. Now what I'll do is I'll hit, oh, actually, let's just change that to true. That's trust server certificate. Hit connect. And it should take me straight into my uh, database. But let's have a look at the databases. There's test DB there. So we can go into there, go into tables. There's the DB inventory. If I right click on it and do select top 1000. It's now going to execute that. And again, you can see we've got our bananas. So in the future videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to work with SQL using this setup. So this will make it a lot easier for you. You have a local version of uh, SQL server running without it interfering with your operating system. Okay, hopefully you liked this. If you did, give it a thumbs up and feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Until next time, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.